Well, because we're on national lockdown, a lot of people are homeschooling. If you have kids, you're homeschooling. So that's what's going on right now. People are getting a taste of something that has been going on in this country for a while and growing over time. And no big surprise, the establishment's got big problems with it. We have an education expert with us now. Inez Felcher Stepman joins us. Uh, she's a policy expert on education. She writes for the Federalist. She's all over the place. Inez, thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Buck. It's always great to be here. Okay, so let's just start with with the reason that this got some attention on the media radar for folks like me was this uh, piece written. What was in the Harvard uh, Harvard Magazine, Harvard University Magazine about homeschooling, and and it's a it's essentially just trashing homeschooling, right? Like homeschooling is. Here, I, I, have a, I have a quote that I can, I can read to you from it because I thought it was so, it was so wow and, and unbelievably out of touch. It's condescension. The whole article is just spectacularly elitist, but yes, go yeah. ahead. The issue is, do we think that parents, this is the quote, that, do we think that parents should have 24-7 essentially authoritarian control over their children from ages 0 to 18? I think that's dangerous. I think it's always dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless and to give the powerful ones total authority, she's talking about parents. <laughs> it's amazing. It's it's Marxism for the family. Um, <laughs> to put it in the in the oppressed versus the the powerful um, frame is ridiculous. Of course, that's very much contrary to our own constitutional tradition, uh, which re recognizes a parent's right to choose um, their their children's uh, schooling, among many other things that uh, parents decisions parents make for children, like medical decisions. Um, you know, our, our entire system recognizes the fact that parents should be the ones making decisions for their minor children, with very, very rare exceptions aside when, when the state can prove abuse, for example. Um, but she really, she makes three claims, right, um, in this piece. She says that um, homeschoolers, first of all, that they, they expose their kids to higher levels of abuse, that is debunked by research, right? It's actually uh, public school kids who are exposed uh, to higher levels of abuse, of abuse than homeschool kids, even though, of course, it can happen anywhere and it's terrible. Um, but there's no evidence that homeschooling increases uh, the risk of children um, being abused. And second, she says somehow that, that um, kids are going to, to academically not be prepared for life well, the evidence that we have shows that homeschoolers get higher SAT scores, they get higher ACT scores, they come into college more prepared, right? Of course, it's hard to do a true study because you don't really have a blind control group. Um, but the evidence we have shows that homeschoolers are better educated and more academically advanced than their, their public school peers. And third, she makes, I think, the crux of the heart of, of what she really wants to say, even though she kind of dances around it, which is these, these homeschoolers are just not teaching what she thinks um, their mm. kids ought to learn. And um, she, she pokes that in a, 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 some things about tolerance. She says, oh, if they don't go to public school, how will they learn to tolerate people who are different from them? Well, even there, the evidence we have shows that homeschoolers and kids who go to private school through ch school choice programs, by the way, actually in surveys are more likely to say that those who are different than them deserve uh, civil liberties, deserve natural rights. So again, they are more tolerant than kids in public school, according to the research. So the research says she's wrong on all three counts. And I think all of that was just window dressing to, she, she wants to replace what those, uh, those yokel parents are teaching their kids, you know, about the constitution and the Bible. And I, I thought that one of the, the most memorable and, and in, a, in a bad way for the people writing the article and making the argument was the graphic that they had that showed the homeschool kid stuck inside a house, which is really made to be uh, something of, of a prison. And there's all these other kids running around outside in the sunshine. This is hilarious. I live right next to a very large, very poorly performing public school. And there aren't kids running around outside in beautiful sunshine and fields. There are kids locked in what do look a bit like penal colony cells. I mean, it's not a particularly nice, fancy place. My friend Michael Malice, who I think you know as well, often says, and he's unrepentant on this, he's just like public schools are dressed up jails for children. That's what he called. I mean, he, he thinks that the, 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 the process of putting people under force of law into these facilities for seven hours a day on a schedule that's really based on adults needing to be somewhere and get paid. It's really not what's best for the kids. As you see, a lot of schools you know, are starting, what, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. People say that kids should probably be able to sleep in even later than that. So 
what what evidence is there on the behavioral side? I mean, I'm just curious. Do we do we ever do we even have any data on homeschoolers in terms of uh, you know drug abuse, uh, incarceration rates, anything like that? Because the suggestion seems to be, well, if you stay at home with your family, you're at some greater risk somehow, or or you're stuck in a prison. Look, all, all the evidence shows that homeschoolers um, outperform public school kids on a whole variety of metrics. But again, I do want to put the asterisk on that. It, it's a very um, you know sno- small percentage of kids that are homeschooled. It is uh, about two million ho- kids who have been homeschooled before this current crisis. So it's not you know zero kids, but um, it is such a, a unusual lifestyle choice for a lot of families that it's hard to get good data. And it might be that like super educated families or super dedicated families are are pulling their kids out of school. But what but that that vision that this Harvard professor has of homeschooling is very, very old. The way she thinks about it is primarily religious. There are a lot of religious families homeschooling. There are also a lot of secular families that are homeschooling because they're not happy about what you call the prisons and the public schools. They're not happy um, with the academic performance of the public schools. And um, they're not happy also with the behavioral influence of the public schools. Um, what we do know, I don't know about homeschooling in particular, but we do know that, um, for example, private schools and, and charter schools have lower levels of, um, of, of violence within the schools, right? So there's a lot of parents who are making these decisions for safety reasons. Um, but, but look, at the end of the day, this is, I don't, I don't think this current crisis is going to result in, in a huge explosion in homeschool numbers. I think most par- parents still want to send their kids to a brick and mortar school. And that's fine. Those schools do serve as a certain amount of community glue. They do let kids meet each other, let families meet each other. Um, but I, I hope that this crisis, the silver lining of it, will be that, that parents will review what their kids are learning because it can be remarkably hard. Uh, you'd be surprised how hard it is to actually get a hold of a curriculum in a lot of public schools in the United States. And and I hope that parents, this will help culturally recenter parents. I hope that this crisis pushes us back in the direction that America traditionally has gone and, and in the opposite direction of this Harvard article, which is to recenter parents as the primary educators of their children, even if they then decide to hire a school or a tutor or a, a combination of things, or they decide to do it at home to educate their children at home as homeschoolers, that whatever way they choose to do that, they are in the driver's seat and not the state, not the bureaucracy, you know, not the principal, but parents are in the driver's seat of their kids' education. And I, I, I think that, that there's a chance that, that this recenters that old American principle. So it sounds like you're not necessarily uh predicting that there'll be a big surge, although I, I guess, you know, I, I always say no one can predict the future, but you're saying that, you know, it just it doesn't look like there'll be a huge surge in permanent homeschooling. Clearly, there's a lot of homeschooling going on now that wasn't before. Do we have any sense of, um, you know, w- ways that people may try to bring more homeschooling into the way that they're, I mean, you mentioned tutors and things like that and, and, and a greater degree of autonomy for families. Do you think that the, there's going to be a lot more efforts to do supplementary telelearning, uh, you know, to use these. I, I, I'm just wondering, I'm not a parent, right? And I've never, I've never dealt with kids so in this way, so I don't really, I can't speak from any first-person perspective on this. But I would just wonder if now that parents are at least being forced to, to see a little bit more of what their kids are or are not learning, maybe they decide that, you know what's great? It'd be to send my, if I'm going to send the kid to a public or a charter or a, a parochial school or private school, whatever it may be, But I'm also going to make sure they're getting something else that we can do at home, not necessarily being taught by the parent, but programs online. I mean, online learning is incredible. People are figuring this out now. Um, I I think the same thing about the online learning as I think about homeschooling, which is um, now that everybody's trying it, a certain percentage of people will find out that they really like it. Um, And I think especially parents uh, with kids uh, who have difficulty uh, with the social environment of schools for whatever reason, maybe they're being viciously bullied at school, Uh, maybe they have uh, special needs, and they're having a really hard time, as many families do, enforcing the so-called IEP, individualized learning plan, um, for their kids' special needs with the school. I think some of those families especially might make the decision that, hey, you know, this is this is better than than what my kid has has gotten before at the public school. I, I don't see this going huge and widespread simply because um, ch- schools do function as childcare for a lot of dual income households. We're finding that out right now. And every time Andrew Cuomo briefs, uh, briefs us on the coronavirus, right, he has to say you can't really open the economy without opening the schools because parents need to somewhere to put their children. No, that's not education, right? That's just 
the child care function of the schools. But but anyway, either either way, even if they're happy with how their public schools are educating their kids, I hope that this time will be a, a chance to recenter exactly that that decision making process at home. Um, and, and just one more note, this is not really homeschooling what's happening right now, right? If you talk to actual homeschoolers, they'll say, no, 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 this is, this is a ball of stress. This is not um, what we've been doing. Uh, so, I mean, most homeschoolers, they, they have co-ops, they go to activities outside with other homeschoolers, they're, they're swapping ideas, swapping curriculum. It's not a sudden, you're stuck at home, you're trying to do worksheets um, and stuff on. I think that's a lot of the things that parents are really frustrated with right now. Um, that's not really homeschooling. In homeschooling, um, you have a lot more preparation going into it, and you have a lot more external activities and, and communication with other people. This isolation during this pandemic is not really homeschooling. So I, I just want to be clear about that. Is your adorable pug within eyeshot right now? And if so, do we get to pull him up so those who can see him on Skype will get a? <laughs> is he nearby? Can you see how messy. If he's not, I, I know, I know the hubs is nearby, but there he is for those. I know on radio and podcast, you can't, but she just shows he's got a pug. What, what's his name again? He's great. He's great. His name is Thor. Thor, the pug. And also everyone say hi to yeah. Jar Jarrett's in the other room studying and working hard. But Jared is uh, Inez's uh, husband and, and a friend of mine. And we'll have him on the show next week. But man, the pug, I guess say that's a very distinguished pug with the gray on the face. He's cute. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a pug. He's half beagle, half half pug and um i've never seen another one that's black and white like he is he's just kind of like he gets a lot of boston terrier uh comparisons yes. yeah i have one of those growing up uh where should people go to read your latest and uh, what are you working on um sure so uh either at iwf.org or or the federalist um and actually i have a piece out at the federalist uh, related to you know we're all sponsoring this lady to uh, write her her um, uh, uninformed opinions about high, ho uh, homeschooling at Harvard. So um, I have a piece up about how we shouldn't be giving more money to universities, especially during this time where there are so many Americans hurting. Universities should definitely not be at the front of the line for the bailout like they were uh, in the CARES Act. So. All righty. Inez felcher Stepman, thank you so much. Great to talk to you, Inez. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from the first, please click subscribe.